it's me again! So in this video I'm going to be talking to you about how I named the characters for the Cassie Blight trilogy and that sounds kind of boring but I don't think it's going to end up being boring and if it is oh well you can skip through over this. This is also a blog post and if you want to see the pictures of what I'm talking about which I think you will um, there'll be a link somewhere or else you're looking at this video while you're on the blog post. I don't know. Um, either way, I forgot what I was going to say. Again. <laughs> or, you know, because you're going to get sick of looking at this. Um, so, I don't normally put a lot of thought into my character names. Uh, I know there's a lot of psychology that can go into how you pick your character's names, but I am just not that clever. Um, one thing I do try to do, I try to keep my characters from having the same uh, first letter of their names, at least not in the same scene, and I am reading a book right now that there's two characters and their names start with an S and an E, and they're in a lot of scenes together and it's so confusing. So, you know, and this author should know better because they've written like dozens of novels. But anyway, enough griping. So what I normally do to pick a character name is I refer to my handy dandy, which you can't see because it's backwards because it's a video. Um, it's called Building Believable Characters and I got it from the library book sale many, 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 many years ago. Probably paid a dollar for it. It is more than paid for itself with character names. Um, it has other stuff in there too for like, you know, eye color, hair color, personality traits, but I don't use it that much for that. Um, so from that book, there are a couple names in this trilogy. Um, the title character, Mr. Tenpenny, came from there. His name is Busby Tenpenny. And I just, I really like the name Busby because it's kind of funny and he needed a little bit of humor to lighten him up. Um, who else came from there? Runa Dunwiddle, she's a doctor who you'll meet in book one. And... Um, there's a character, Olivia, who you'll meet in books two and three. And I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of more characters that, oh, Alistair, you'll meet in book one. Anyway, um, but the majority of the characters, or at least the characters that have the biggest parts, were named for pets. Yes. Um, and again, if you, if you go to the blog post, you'll see pictures of the pets, so I highly recommend it. Um, and again, you know, get sick of this. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so the main character, Cassie, was named for my dad's dog. She is a Papillon Chihuahua mix, and she's a real pain in the butt. I'm dog-sitting her right now. Um, she doesn't look anything, the Cassie, the character, doesn't look anything like a Papillon. Um, <laughs> she's gonna have big ears or something. Anyway, so the character, there's another character called Toby Tenpenny, and he is Busby's grandson. And he was named, the Toby part, not the Tenpenny part, he was named for my mom's dog, who is a big old fluffy black monster dog. And he is also a pain in the butt. So, you know, it's just a characteristic of dogs. Um, but, so those characters, they don't really have a lot. They, I just got the names for those. I didn't take any personality traits or anything from the pets. However, with some side characters, I did have some fun with taking pets and, and taking their features and some of their personality traits and working them into the characters. So one of the characters is Fiona and she's a school teacher. And I'm just thinking right now, I don't think I ever gave her a last name. Uh oh. Anyway, so Fiona was named for my cat, who is an orange tabby, and I got her, she was, uh, I got her from the Humane Society, she was taken from a, uh, sort of a hoarding case, and she, for some reason, I don't know why she came, you know, she came this way, she walks with a limp, and she's kind of like, she's really small up here, but she has a really big butt, you know, <laughs> it happens. Um, so then the character Fiona, she's got red hair, kind of a strawberry blonde co color of hair, and she's got kind of narrow shoulders, but she's got kind of the wide hips going on. So I had a little fun with that. There's also a character named Lola, and I think Lola Lemieux. 
she was named for a rabbit I had. And Lola the rabbit was a big fluffy black bunny and she had so much personality and she just loved to just get right in there and she actually, um, she used to make the bed. <laughs> she would scuff her paws across the bed and make the bed. So um, the character Lola Lemieux in the book is, um, she's a black woman and she has fluffy, you know, blackish grayish hair and she's just, you know, everybody loves her. You can't not love Lola. And um, who else got named for a book carriage? Oh, I should have probably thought this out before recording, right? Oh, um, later in the books, um, I mean, in the trilogy, there's going to be a nurse called Jake, and he was named for my dog, Jake, who was not a pain in the butt. Um, he he was a big old husky shepherd mix, and he had two different colored eyes, so I decided to make Jake, Jake the nurse, not Jake the dog. Jake the nurse have two different colored eyes, and I think he has kind of a, you know, shaggy kind of hairdo like Jake the dog did. And I think there was one more. Oh, um, there's a girlfriend coming up in books two and three. No, wait, maybe just three. I forget. Yeah, books two and three. Uh, her name is Daisy. She was named for my dog. Uh, the dog I had after Jake. I didn't have two dogs at the same time. Too much work. And um, off the top of my head, that is all I can think of for characters that were named for pets, but I did have a lot of fun with that. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's more, but I can't think of it right now. So, um, if you have questions about characters' names, it might be a pet, it might not be. Alright, um, I think that's it for this time.